Hello, everyone. I'm Margaret Miller, Assistant Professor of Viola at Colorado State University. This video is intended to help you prepare for the Colorado All-State Orchestra auditions. Most of our time will be spent on the two excerpts, but I'd like to spend a moment talking about the scales that you will also have to play. There are several items to always keep in mind for these scales and any scales. Use the entire bow from frog to tip and tip to frog. It's very, very important to make sure you use the same amount of bow. Be mindful of smooth bow changes and clean string crossings. The tempo marking for the scales will give your mind enough time to process what you have to do and when you have to do it. Be consistent with your fingerings. This will help the intonation be more secure. Always know what finger makes the shift, paying careful attention to descending shifts. Practice isolating the shifts that tend to be the most problematic for you. Do use your metronome, but make sure you internalize the tempo. One way you can do this is to practice the scales with the metronome and then without, followed by a check with the metronome to make sure your tempo is steady. One word about the minor scales. The D minor, the first D minor scale is melodic minor. The slurred scale is natural minor. Please watch out for that.
looking at the Mozart excerpt, I would encourage you to get a copy of both movements, the Mozart and the Brahms, so you have an idea of the context in which the viola part happens. IMSLP.org is a great website for downloading one movement or an entire symphony, so you have an idea of what's going on all the way through. Both of these excerpts appear on professional orchestra auditions, so hang on to this music. You will use it again. Make sure you have a pencil handy. Mark anything you need to in your music. It's awfully challenging to remember all the details in preparation for an audition. Next, listen, watch a recording on YouTube. It's very important that, especially as violists, that we understand the context in which our part happens in the orchestra. It's not just about knowing our own part, but how it fits within the entire orchestration. If you can do that, if you can play your audition so that whoever's listening can hear the orchestra part, you've done a good audition. Playing Mozart well involves understanding the classical era style. A forte in Mozart is not like a forte in Beethoven. Everything is very light, but it also has to be very clean and as clear as possible. So how to start? You've been given a metronome marking, but that's not your starting metronome marking. That's your final tempo for when you record. What I would suggest is backing up your metronome four to six clicks and start at a tempo at which you feel really comfortable. You can play all the notes, it's musical, you can still phrase, and you can do it four to five times in a row. Once you can do that, then you can start moving your metronome up one or two clicks. The nice part about this is that this new metronome marking is now your old slow marking. So you don't always have to go back to your old marking, say for instance, 112 to the half note. For this performance of the Mozart, I have slowed the metronome down to around 112 to 116 to the half note. You can certainly take it a little bit slower if you need to and then work your way up from there. Be very mindful of the bow stroke. In order to play a light Mozart forte, you have to be in the middle of the bow, as I mentioned earlier, but also it's not too heavy not too much pressure in the string. passages keep the bow in the middle. Being at the tip is too light for the viola, but also being at the frog is going to be too heavy. Again, forte in Mozart is not the same as a forte in Beethoven. It's lighter, so being in that nice sweet spot in your bow will make a huge difference. The only fingering that might give you a little bit of trouble is the eighth note passage at the end of the excerpt that starts on an A. This is great practice for your fourth finger, but you might also try starting it in second position. That way you'll have nearly an identical fingering to the previous eighth note passage. You will have a few extra string crossings, so you have to be mindful of that, but you might experiment with starting in second position. Here's a performance of the Mozart that is closer to concert tempo. <laughs> was a romantic era composer. So in this excerpt from the second movement of the fourth symphony, the sound needs to be extremely legato and the vibrato needs to be as continuous as possible. 
He writes Dolce, so it's also very sweet. This excerpt happens about in the middle of the movement. So if you've downloaded the whole movement, when you're listening to it, you can find it very easily. As for the vibrato, one thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to start and stop each finger. For me, what that means, I focus on keeping my left hand very relaxed and also vibrating across my bow changes. Even though there is no crescendo, you can intensify the music starting at the end of the fourth measure. So you reach the high point on the D sharp, and then you've got the printed diminuendo. So with a little bit of a crescendo, you'll have some room to make a nice diminuendo. However, there is no retard printed, so be very careful about that. tips as you prepare for your Allstate Orchestra audition. Do record yourself. Record yourself early. Record yourself often. Just make sure that you are listening for something very specific, such as intonation, clarity, phrasing, and anything else you can possibly think of. Certainly use your metronome, but also play musically while you do so. Auditions are challenging, so make sure that you enjoy what you're playing and be mindful of tension issues while you're playing. One final thought, always make a great sound. Thank you for watching. Good luck. Hope to see you in February.